Good evening, everyone. As a quick reminder, we want to point out that the song numbers on the left are from your missalette. And the, of course, the numbers on the right are from the hymnal. So we would like to practice on, on page 51 in your missalette. It's a new responsorial song. So if you turn to page 51. Our opening song is number 517, Praise to You, O Christ, Our Savior.
Lord be with you. This calls to mind our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries.
letter of St. Paul to Philemon. I, Paul, an old man, and now also a prisoner of Christ Jesus, urge you on behalf of my child, Onesimus, whose father I have become in my imprisonment. I am sending him, that is, my own heart, back to you. I should have liked to retain him for myself, so that he might serve me on your behalf in my imprisonment for the gospel. But I did not want to do anything without your consent, so that the good you do might not be forced, but voluntary. Perhaps this is why he was away from you for a while, that you might have him back forever, no longer as a slave, but more than a slave, a brother. Beloved especially to me, but even more so to you, as a man and in the Lord. So, if you regard me as a partner, welcome him as he would me. The word of the Lord. Sermon on the Mount, right? These 
great long sermons, great actions of a teacher, a new Moses on a new mountain giving, giving a new law. It's a very Jewish gospel. John's gospel is really a whole category by itself. We can get like a whole study just from John on how he is, how he's different. John's gospel is more about this man who was so confused with the familiarity and an intimacy and a love of God, he writes about the Lord's life in a little mystical way, almost like his feet are like, like 10 feet off the ground. Beautiful um, John's writing, John Gospel's letters, and then the book, the book of Revelation. And so John's written with this real, this real mystical um, purpose. Luke, though, is written as, as kind of, in a way, the Gospel of St. Paul. Luke, again, was one of the twelve, was the original followers of Christ. And he learns about Christ from the life of both St. Paul and Mary. And so most of what we know about Mary, you know, the Annunciation and so forth, only found in Luke's Gospel. So it's safe to say that tradition kind of gives us the, the idea that Luke must have known her, must have like had coffee with her, and learned about her life as the mother of God. But Luke was also an apostle of St. Paul. And much of what Luke writes about um, in the later portion of, of Acts is Paul, but most of Luke's theology is Paul's theology. And Paul is the apostle of the Gentiles. He's the one that goes out into the world because he believes that this Jesus is not just for the Jews, but for all of humanity. And so Paul, the apostle of the Gentiles, taps Luke in a way to write his gospel for the Gentiles. And so much of Luke's writings, and even hearing this whole year see, especially in these last few weeks and these future weeks to come, are these little parables about how all are invited, all are desired to be saved. It doesn't matter if you're a Jew, a Greek, or a Gentile, it just doesn't matter. All that matters is that you are being saved by Christ, and do you want to participate in that? Do you want to join in on that? Because the invite is open. The invite is free. You can take it or leave it. But I really hope that you take it. And that's Paul's writings. And that really is the writings of St. Luke. He invites all to participate in this. But what is this? We see in the Gospel today that St. Luke is talking about, about both um, building up, building a tower, leading an army, to do those, you've got to be smart and calculating and intentional. But also, we have to let go of everything, hold on to the cross, and go follow Him. And so we see in this Gospel that the things and the stuff and the people and the movements of this world are always calculating. How can I build the best power? How can I lead the best army? How can I win this battle? Be the best at this? Accomplish that? Maybe move them with this? Amaze them with that? We're always in this constant flow of trying to calculate, trying to strategize, trying to master something. And that's of the world. And we got to do it as we're living in the world. It's a burden, it's a bother, but we all do it. We're just accustomed to it. But when it comes to Christ, though, there's no calculation that happens. You don't have to have accomplished anything to be born into the Jewish people. Be a certain religion. What matters is do you cling on to Christ? Do you desire Him? Do you let go of everything? Hate the world. Hate when it pulls you away from Christ. Hate when it distracts you and gives you lies. Do you let go of your all and cling on to Him and follow Him? Because if that's what we do, then we'll come to understand what it is to be saved. We're not doing anything. We're simply holding on to Him and clinging on to Him. As the builder of the tower, the leader of the army, needs, he needs, needs plans and skills and talents and tradesmen and soldiers and porters and guns and ammunition. All we need is just Christ. And what he gives us, his body, his blood, 
His word, baptism, grace, it's all we need. There's nothing of this world that can save us. It just won't. If we desire to be saved, we got to be people who let go of that constant rat race of trying to master and accomplish or calculate something and just find that peace and that quiet and that solitude that only He can offer. That the sounds we hear, the stillness we experience, the salvation happening within us. We aren't doing anything, just participating allowing Him to do it and work it through us. I mean, we desire that with all that we are and cling solely unto Him. And like Paul and Luke and the Blessed Mother, desire to share that and give that good news with the world and invite others to remove themselves from that race, from that chaos and that noise. Experience the stillness and the solitude and the beauty saved and being made sons and daughters of the Father who wants to live forever. May that be our will, our faith, and our church. I love you.
We pray to the Lord. Lord Heavenly God, we come before this day with great faith, knowing you're here and answer all prayer according to your will. And may we, as your holy people, your sons and daughters, each day de dedicate and devote ourselves to letting go a little bit more of this world and clinging more firmly unto Christ and his cross. Even though there is suffering and hardship in that, we also experience the sweet delight, the beautiful joy of knowing we are following Him, serving Him, and doing His will. And in that process, becoming saved, being made holier men and women, sons and daughters, and future saints. And we ask all of these things confidently through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our song for preparation of gifts is on page 593 on Eagle Swing.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, as they guide your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these sacred mysteries. At the time he was betrayed, entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, for the new eternal covenant, who poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Thank you. 
peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, to be the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ.
Let us pray. Grant that your faithful Lord, you are nourished and endowed with life, with the food of your word and heavenly sacrament. May so benefit from your beloved Son's great gifts, that we may merit each more share in his life, and this it reigns forever and ever. Just two things that this week uh, we begin uh, adding effect time on Tuesday night at 8 p.m. So just keep it keep in mind Tuesday evening at 8 p.m. There will be confessions here every week, and also this Wednesday starts um, the Q and A I'm having. We're just gonna be here in the church Wednesday night at seven. So have a great week. The Lord be with you. Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Our closing song is number 595, Though the Mountains May Fall.